Chapter 5 You are not the body, you are the holder of the body. Questioner You said that we are knowing ourselves in the body form and that we need to know our real identity. So what is our identity, our existence? Maharaj Your existence is spontaneous existence, spontaneous presence. Your spontaneous presence is silent, invisible, anonymous, unidentified identity. The world is projected out of your spontaneous presence. Your spontaneous presence is silent, invisible, anonymous, unidentified identity. The world is projected out of your spontaneous presence. You are totally unborn, but you are thinking, I am born and I am going to die. These are the concepts, the illusionary thoughts. You are unborn. You are ultimate truth. I am inviting the attention of the silent, invisible listener in you. I am inviting the attention of the silent, invisible listener in you that is ultimate truth. It is ultimate truth. It is unborn. It does not know death and birth. Prior to beingness, you did not know about death and birth. You did not know anything about God. It was only when the spirit clicked with the body that beingness came along with all the concepts and illusions. Your father, your mother, brother and sister, to name a few, are all body relations that came out of this body feeling. You were told God exists. Almighty God is here or there. He is to be found in this religion or that one, in this church or that temple. When there was no body feeling, there was no beingness. Prior to beingness, there was nothing. No other, no relations, nothing. You are not the body. You were not the body. You will not remain the body. Open fact. Here is a simple example. Your parents told you this body is called boy and that body is called girl. You accepted this information. They gave you a name, say Ravi or Sita, Susan, Paul, etc. and you accepted this identity without question. You went through the stages of the body from a young man or woman to middle age to old age. Along the way you asked many questions such as Am I just this body with a name tagged onto it? And if not, who am I? Now that you have come here, you can go deeper. Stop and look within. Find out what you are. Get rid of illusion. Then your reality will be uncovered. Self-inquire. Use discrimination. Everything is within you. Master says, you are ultimate reality, ultimate truth, almighty God. You have tremendous power and strength, but you are unaware of your power because you have accepted this body form. The Master says, you are reality, God. You are to accept what the Master says. Spirituality aside, you know 
the body is not your identity because it only lasts for X number of years. The Master is showing you your reality. Questioner. So what you are saying, Maharaj, is that we are to listen to the Master and accept his teachings and stay focused on reality. But in the beginning, is it not necessary to put some effort into dissolving illusion? Maharaj. Yes, at the beginning. You have to do some work to eliminate the illusions and establish reality. You see, when you came across with all these concepts, you accepted them blindly. For example, I am a man or a woman. I belong to this religion or that religion. We are swimming in a world of concepts, sin and virtue, salvation and damnation. There are endless concepts of hell, heaven, moksha, prarabdha, birth, death. All these are to be found in the scriptures, books, from gurus, teachers, masters. Illusion everywhere. There are so many concepts that make you feel you are in bondage, when in fact you are not. You are not in bondage. You are free as a bird. All these concepts came with the body. Prior to beingness, there were no concepts. There was no knowing. We did not know about happiness or peace. After the invisible presence, touched with the body, all concepts started, all requirements started. Everyone is afraid of death. We will do anything to stay alive. But instead of holding on to this fear, why not ask yourself the question, what is death? When you go to sleep, are you afraid to fall asleep? You say, let me sleep, don't disturb me. What difference is death? It is the same. Self-inquire. Every day you may hear of, read about or even have been with someone who has died. The death of the body is a certainty, unavoidable. The dead bodies are then buried or burned. The body will go, it is inevitable, but you are not going anywhere. You are not the body, you are the holder of the body. You are not the body, you are the holder of this body. You are spirit and totally different from the body. The body is only the external part of flesh, blood and bones. Who is acting through the body? Who is experiencing such thoughts as I have very bad thoughts? I have some awful dreams. Who is witnessing all these things? It is the silent, invisible, anonymous, unidentified identity called ultimate truth. Questioner. I will ponder on that. Over the years, I have read a number of spiritual books and I also meditate. When I visit a teacher or attend a satsang, the experience is quite uplifting. I feel happy while I'm there, sitting quietly in the moment, but that feeling doesn't seem to last. Maharaj, okay, so you have read some books, listened to some masters, and you've done a little meditation. Take stock. What effect has all this had on you? Have you found complete peace? 
Are you tension free? Are you fearless? Do you have happiness? If the answer is no, then you have to do self-inquiry so that you will find real and permanent happiness. I am talking about complete happiness without any material cause. If you are continuously reading books that are adding more and more external knowledge, you need to pause, stop for a moment and ask yourself, is this knowledge giving me happiness and fulfilment? Am I fearless? Be truthful with your self-inquiry. Will this knowledge help me when it's my time to leave the body? If the knowledge you're gathering now is not bringing you peace and happiness, then that means it is not working for you. Simple. If it is not helping you now, how is it going to help you on your deathbed? Therefore, of what use is all this knowledge? Find out whose story is being narrated in all these books in the name of spirituality. That is self-inquiry. Questioner, what do you mean by whose story? Maharaj, it is your story. I am not relating, I am not telling you a story about Brahman, Atman, Paramatman or God. I am narrating your story. It is the story of the listener, the invisible listener, the anonymous listener in you. It is the story of selfless self, your selfless self. My master Nisargadatta Maharaj clearly stated that there is nothing except for selfless self. Apart from selfless self, there is nothing. Selfless self alone is ultimate truth, final truth. In his words, except for selfless self, there is no God, no Atman, no Brahman, no Paramatman, no Master. This rare knowledge, enlightenment, will help you realise what ultimate truth is, what final truth is. You are that.